Hi everyone and welcome again to this ASP .NET Core tutorial. In this video we will learn about routing constraints. Routing constraints are very important for the routing concept. Let us start. We are going to cover what is the need of constraints, what all constraints are available in ASP .NET Core, how can we use these constraints in our ASP .NET Core web application. Before learning more about constraints, let's open Visual Studio and let's face a situation. Here we are back to our bookstore web application and let's run this application in debug mode. Let's click on this whole books button and let's open the details of any book. So let's click on this one and this time you can see that we are getting the details of book number 6. Let's match this URL pattern with our code. Let's open the books controller and over here you can notice that first we have written book details and then we are passing an id. Here is the id parameter and the type of this id parameter is integer. But suppose instead of using this integer 6 I am passing some other value for example here I am passing my name. Let's press enter this time and you will notice that we are getting an exception and overall we are getting an exception that is null reference exception. But if you will match this URL with our pattern, then this is a valid URL because first we have written book details and then I am passing some value. But we have not defined anywhere in this URL that this value should be on the integer type. That is the reason we are getting this error. If somehow we have specified the type of this ID parameter, then we will not get this error. And this all is possible by using routing constraint. So now I hope you will understand the need of routing constraints. This time let's put a breakpoint over here and let's understand why we are getting this error. Again let's press the enter button. Okay just focus what you are getting into the id parameter. In the id parameter we are getting 0 and that is the reason that we are getting this exception. Let's resolve this problem. In ASP.NET Core there are loads of constraints available for routing. First one is the type constraints. What is the meaning of type? It means you can define the type of your parameters. Let's see how can we do that. Suppose I want to specify the type for this id parameter. Then to specify the type after this id parameter you need to type colon like this and then you need to define the type for this particular parameter. If the type is integer then you can simply write int. If it is string, decimal, float, date time, whatever is the type of your parameter that you can define over here. Suppose it is decimal, then you can simply type decimal over here. In case this is a string, then you can simply type a string over here. But in our scenario, the id parameter is of integer type. So I am going to type int over here. Now again, let's run this application in debug mode. Let's open any book, click over here. This time you can notice that we are getting the request over here. Click on the continue button. Here is the URL. And this time let's update this URL. Again I am trying to type with this and press enter. This time you can notice that we are getting an 404 page. The application is not matching this URL to that particular resource because we have specified the type of this parameter. And in this scenario the type is a string. But as per our definition the id should be integer. That is why we are getting this 404 phase. Let's enter 0 and click on the enter button. This time you can notice that still you are getting 0 and if I click on the continue button then you can notice that again we are getting an error. So how can we resolve this problem? In ASP.NET Core there are couple of routing constraints available. Second one is length, alpha, regex and required. There are several other constraints in ASP.NET Core. We will try to understand all of them one by one. But first, let's fix the problem of id is equals to 0 value. Right now you can notice that we have applied only one route constraint to this particular id parameter. In case I want to apply one more constraint to this, then I can simply type one more colon and then I can define few other methods like min and inside this min I can type 1. It means the minimum value should be 1. If it is 0, then again we will get 404 page. Let's run this application again. Let's open the details. Perfect. This time it is working fine. Let's pass 0 again and click on the enter button. 
This time you will notice that you are getting 404 page. So by using this approach, you can protect your URLs. And this is how you can use multiple constraints in a single part. Let's say all the changes. Perfect. Now let's run about few more constraints that we have into our application. For that, let's open the home controller and we will try to use all the constraints over here. So let's define a route over here like about us and after this about us I'm going to pass some parameters so suppose this is the name as per the pattern this name is mandatory so along with this about us we must pass this name value into the URL okay let's run this application let's update the URL about us okay because we are not passing any parameters to it that is why we are getting this 404 error let's pass some value suppose here I'm passing 1 2 and remember this 1 2 is available over here in this string parameter let's click on the continue button suppose in this name parameter I want to get only the alphabets then how can I do that to get only the alphabets in ASP.NET Core we have one constraint with name alpha so here you can simply type alpha let's save the changes again run this application let's type the about us url so here is the about us and then we are passing 1 2 this time you can notice that we are getting an 404 error because this 1 2 contains numerical numbers but as per the alpha constraint we must have only the alphabets into our url so let's update this value and this time suppose i'm writing with this then you can see that we are hitting our action method and we have the value available over here in this name parameter let's click on the continue button this is working fine now let's understand about few more constraints suppose i want to set the minimum length for this particular variable so i can set min length and in the min length i can pass my value suppose it is 5 it means this parameter must contain only alphabets and the minimum length should be 5 let's run this application again okay the length of this value is 6 that is why we are getting this value over here in this parameter now let's update this value and this time i'm passing only ni remember this ni is still a valid value for alpha but as per the second constraint this is not a valid value let's click on the enter button and this time you will notice that we are getting an 404 error similar to this min length you can also apply max length you can also use range method over here in the range you can pass your minimum value and maximum value there are loads of constraints available in ESP.NET Core you can also apply regex over here and how can you do that simply you need to put a colon then type regex and inside this parenthesis you can pass your regex then what will happen whatever URL is coming to this application the application will match that URL as per this regex and if it is a valid one then you will get the value over here in this action method you can find all the constraints that are available in ASP.NET Core on this URL let's click on this URL okay here you can notice that this is a github URL for ASP.NET Core github.com.net ASP.NET Core and then we have constraints so here you can notice that we have loads of constraints for example we have alpha boolean it means this is a type parameter if you are using colon bool then your value should be either true or false then we have composite route date time decimal here you can notice that we have loads of constraints available for us now let's understand about few more routing examples if you have given any interview for ASP.NET Core, MEC or ASP.NET Core, then you must have encountered to this question. So what is the question? First, we must have the domain. Then we must have test. And if we are passing one, then we must get some other output. Instead of this one, if I'm passing some other string value, then I must get some other output. Then similarly, if I'm passing 1.1 over here, then I must get some other value. If you are watching this video very carefully, then this is a very basic example. All you have to do is you need to define the type for these parameters. For the first one, you can simply define the type constraint that is integer. For the second one, you can simply define a string. And for the third one, you can define decimal or float as per the requirement. You need to create three routes for all these three examples. And you need to enter all those things into the comment section of this video. Now let's learn about few more constraints in ASP.NET Core. Let's create 
few more action methods over here okay over here i have created three action methods in all the action methods i have only one parameter and i am using three different routes for these three action methods and what is the definition of these routes so first one i must have test then in the variable part it should start from a then second one should start from b and the third one should start from c let's put a breakpoint over here and let's run this application in debug mode so first i'm typing test then a suppose here i'm writing b b let's press enter and as per the route pattern we are getting our request over here in this action method because it is matching to this a value and what we are getting in this a b b let's continue this is a correct value suppose instead of using this a b b let's pass some other value suppose this time i'm writing b nitis press enter and we are getting our request onto our second action method and what is the value over here in this a it is nitis let's click on the continue button let's update this value as well and suppose here i'm writing press enter in the third one we are getting this niti value so this is how you can combine your variables and the hard code values in your url pattern let's click on the continue button i hope this video will help you a lot in the routing concept make sure to hit the like button of this video tell me your feedback and the answer of the situation that i have asked into the comment section share this video and subscribe to the channel thank you for watching have a great day